So greetings everyone. We have gone actually live. I mean, we normally go live five minutes early. Today we are also uh, decided to have it a little different, so we can have a chat while the scenery is playing. So you can comment, you can interact, and that sort of trying to recreate the actual conference setting where we get a chance to interact before the actual event. It also gives you a chance to let me know if uh, everything is working. and if you have proper sound both on facebook and on youtube because somehow youtube is showing me a minor error hello dr nasser uh, can you tell me if the youtube is fine and you have my voice hi dr ravi yes ravi prakash also is here with us and ha huh, for those who join us uh, a little late or if you are watching this as a replay uh as of the recording uh please uh, you can just fast forward the first 5 minutes and we do, we'll start at the exact time so that uh that will always be there uh thank you nasa for telling me yes i appreciate that yes everything is good okay thank you <laughs> thank you and uh Yes. So I think Ravi Prakash yes Dr. Sunita Sumesh yes good morning Sunita Sumesh I'm sorry and uh, as you can see sir is already with us so if you want to say anything to him he will also see your comments you can interact with him So so you know this uh, video of course starts with two cats because I love cats there's a lion and there's a tiger <laughs> I seriously searched to find those bits and uh, what to do I really love those <laughs> But somehow I think it's playing very very slowly for some reason anyway it's okay it's just the background So We are now have also Dr. Shrinivas with us. Good morning, Dr. Shrinivas. Good morning, Shrinivas. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ravi. <laughs> yes. So Dr. Nasser is with us from the US. He is one of our regulars. He makes a lot of contribution and uh, he's there with us almost every week. Although it must be extremely late in the night there, but uh, dedication, he's always there. <laughs> He tries to be always there. Okay. okay, then Dr. Prasad. Yes, good morning to you too. Good morning, Prasad. and we have dr pushpalata hi <laughs> yes good morning shrinivas good morning shrinivas nice to see shrinivas again back on his feet yes true he had us all extremely worried uh, So, Doctor Pushparaj Shetty, for you. Yes, good morning, Doctor yes. Pushparaj. Good morning. Oh, yes. Karen. Good, good morning. morning. <laughs> so, hmm, we are almost there. What is the time? Okay, one minute more. Doctor Sandhya, good morning. Good morning, Sandhya. 
So I think one of your ex students, Dr. Sudhendra. Yeah, yeah. He is very active. <laughs> yes, he was also on the channel some time back. In fact, twice once as a moderator and once as a speaker. Okay. Sharmunadan, good morning. Hey, all my colleagues. <laughs> okay. Nice to have everyone here. Oh, yeah. yeah, good morning. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Malska, good morning. Yes, good morning to you too. Yes, now we need to just start. And uh, okay, I've made a new beginning intro move. Thanks. So we are here with the beginning. How was that beginning, sir? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Superb. Thank you. Just trying new things and working on new things, what to do. Okay, so now let's start. I just have to add this to the stream and we go on with, uh, is it added? Yes, I think. So now the official beginning of the program. Greetings to all of you and welcome to another episode on the Oral Pathologist in Focus series. This is a series that takes the focus on oral pathologists, the ones who are mentors, teachers, researchers, and overall those who have made extraordinary contributions to the field. And on that note today, we have Dr. G.S. Kumar, who is a renowned oral pathologist and dentist in India. Almost every dentist and definitely our oral pathologist here know him. I've had the fortune of knowing Sir for the last 30 years. Probably he doesn't remember it, but I do. And it's a great pleasure and honor to welcome him today on the channel. Now we have a short introduction for Sir, for those who have not been so lucky to know him personally. And that is Dr. G.S. Kumar. He recently retired after 36 years in academics. In his last post, he was the Dean KSI Institute of Dental Science and Research, Tamil Nadu. He started his career in Kots, Manipal, and then went on to STM Dental College, Darwad. He's worked as a visiting professor, University of West Indies, received training in molecular biology in King's College, London. He is fellow of many academies, including Pierre Fauchard, uh, General Education, and the Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathologists. He is best known and very well known amongst everybody as the contributor and the editor to Orb of Auburn's Oral Histology and Embryology, the 12th to 15th edition. He has many research uh, publications, many lectures, and also has been very active in the professional associations, both the IDA and our Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, where he was in fact a former president of the association. Now, bioditors are, of course, great things. Give us a very good image of what a person has done in their career path, but they don't tell us what really happened. How was the journey for them and for everybody around them? Now, that is an image that we can get better from some of the things sirs, students, and colleagues have contributed. These are just words taken. This collection was very kindly done by one of my ex-students, Dr. Yamuna Devi, who has worked with Sir, and that was also a very good coincidence. So these are some of the things that were, I could have just taken words and sentiment from those, and these are what I can share with you today. So this goes as, Dear Dr. Kumar, to us you are a perfect gentleman, a mentor and a guide, one of a kind, well-accomplished oral pathologist, a true academician, an epitome of hard work and dedication, filled with knowledge, a legacy of discipline, influence and guidance, a constant source of motivation, inspiration, generous, admirable, a compass to the lost ship, a wonderful human being, 
Now, with those few sentiments, let me thank sir again for joining us and welcome everybody once again. And then let us go on with the actual talk, which I'm sure everyone is really waiting to hear from sir. Yes. So, thank you, sir, for joining us oh. today. <laughs> oh, so too many, too many words of appreciation. I don't know whether <laughs> all this is true. <laughs> It, that is not for you to decide. That was for the people who said it to decide. <laughs> Thank you. You are very generous. Oh, very yeah, generous. Most welcome, sir. I think uh, without without a shadow of doubt, you have definitely made a great difference uh, to you. oral pathology and to dentistry in India. So many years, so much that you have done. So I'm, I'm going to just cut through the chase and start right away. So uh, okay. I think starting at the beginning. So why oral pathology, sir? Why, you ask, why, dent why, why, why dentistry in the first aspect? <laughs> okay, yes. Why dentistry will be, yes, start from there? <laughs> well, I've, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, hope I'm, I'm retired. I can take a lot more time to talk. I'm very happy that there's so many people to listen to me. And thank Mandana for giving me an audience for, for, me to, for me to talk to and listen to. Okay. So my, I, I chose why dentistry in the first place because uh, I had to choose between maths and biology. Maths was not very bad, but my interaction with the teacher was so bad, so I had to do biology. Once I took biology, my choice was MBBS only, as usual, because in 1975, the year I joined the BDS course, dentistry was not much known to public. And uh, my choice was MBBS and I waited and I said, okay, if I'm not getting it, then the third list or the fourth list or the BDS, I got the marks. Those days, the selection was very manipulative. Your name was there, then get struck off by the minister and so on. So one of those unfortunates. Nevertheless, I joined dentistry because I didn't get MBBS. And uh, after joining the course, initially doing with plaster work and making cubes, bending wires and all that, Maybe it's quite depressed. But I always found a lot of attraction towards medical subjects because I think there was a link to the MBBS course. So that's the reason, one of the reasons why I chose uh, oral pathology uh, in my career. I had an option of doing oral surgery with my primary interest, but I didn't qualify according to the uh, people who interviewed me. So I took up to uh, oral pathology. I had more connection. And one more reason is that those days, the two years MDS course, the getting through the first attempt was very, very difficult. Not because you're not bad, not because you're good or not good at something like that, but because you fell out with the professor and you're out. So the professor was very important. And in the government dental college Chennai where I studied, there were few gentlemen professors. My professor, Dr. Vishwanathan, was a gentleman of the first order. So, though I like to do a course which has got some medical connection, and Walter was in the cards as second to the as second choice, and I love to do the course under him because he was a thorough gentleman. Not that he'll pass me automatically, but because he gives a lot of respect for merit and. If you interact with him, the two years close interaction, he makes you feel that you're a junior colleague, not a PG student. We're not allowed to stand with the hands folded or hands clasped together, class made to sit down. It's a very, very rare thing those days. So that's why I chose body pathology out of interest as well as to the a great person, a gentleman like my professor Dr. R. Vishwanath. That is true. Dr. Vishwanathan, I have met him only a few times, but uh, I, and the first time I met him, I wasn't even, uh, I was just a junior lecturer in oral pathology, I think, and uh, he had come for an inspection. But he was so kind and, and you could make out, I mean, he had no, no feeling that, uh, you know, that I'm that much more senior, this one is a kid here, you know, that sort of a thing was not there. He literally uh, treated everybody equally and 
truly like a colleague. Right from, I think, the day you became a doctor, you were his colleague. It was like that. It, it, he was really a very impressive person, yes. So, sir, now going back, so 36 years in academics, you have seen a lot of things change. If you had to think of one thing that became better and one thing that has become worse in this 36 years, what would they be? One thing that became better, the first note we start with, one thing that became better is the the amount of knowledge that has been um, uh, built up over the years. Because see, all the books have become bigger and bigger in size. And there's a lot of uh, understanding with, of the basics and the and the oral pathology and other lesions. So there's a lot of inter- integration is there. Then, um, yeah, students are some students are interested. We always have some very good students who are interested, and uh, that's a good thing. What is bad is that there is a lack of clinical material and clinical disconnect of oral pathology course. That's what it is. In fact, uh, made the dentistry demise on how much you people are exposed to clinical uh, treatment procedures. You need patients. And many institutions, the patients are very inadequate. So this is the reason we're not, uh, I think a lot of lack of clinical experience is the main thing. And second, um, Students join, you know what dentistry is nowadays, but in spite of that, the students are not very interested. Is not attracting good students as a first choice of profession. That continues to be the same as it was earlier. That is very true, yes. So, sir, what about, I mean, you have been well known I mean, uh, famed, uh, not just because you were very good at the subject, which you were, because uh, when I said I met you 30 years back was the day, it was just after I finished my BDS. And I think in Darwad, in STM, you were running an FDS course or something, FDA, some some preparatory Uh, course for... Preparatory course for FDS, yes. Yes. So I attended that course and you were taking, you were teaching, (laughs) yes, oral histology. (laughs) So I have sat in your class. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, what was more, I was not actually directly your student. So I was having the fun of learning from you without detention. Uh, because everyone else told me, wow, sir is so strict. How could you talk to him? I said very easily. <laughs> I mean, it was fun talking to him. But uh, so what is what is your take? I know you were very strict and uh, as you saw, even in the comments, someone said great disciplinarian. How important do you think discipline is and how much do you think it's lacking today? <laughs> um, when it comes to work, I insist that they should do it. And that's, that's I said, I'm very, I'm very quite keen on dedication the work and doing the work properly. With that extent, I am a disciplinarian. Nowadays, uh, well, I've, I've mellowed with age, uh, you know, that when you are single, you are very, very strict. And then your wife comes and your spouse comes to your life. Then you become a little mellowed. The children teach you a lot of patience. So I've gone through all this and I'm mellowed with age. And uh, I don't know whether I'm strict nowadays. I don't know. <laughs> but okay. work has work has to be done for me. The given her work, it should be done. That, that's important. I still insist on that. There yeah, already someone is saying he is not strict but disciplined. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, so uh, you know, uh, I think what, uh, I don't know, like you said earlier on, things were very different in our education system. Now, there was a time uh, where very early on we had this uh, thing where, uh, in fact, when I joined MDS and that was well past, way ahead of you. But the point was uh, that, uh, there was this idea that, you know, like an MDS course, you, you are never fit to pass it. It was, you are given an MDS, not really, uh, you know, earn an MDS. And uh, frankly, I thought that was a little ridiculous idea because I, I personally felt it was insulting both to the teacher and the student to say that we cannot train and you cannot be trained. <laughs> 
but that was the way it was and then from that extreme we have come to a point where i think uh, we, sometimes we literally give away marks you know i i don't know i, I think we have not reached that middle point where it's uh, more uh, specific more i would not i don't know specifically merit based what do you think well I, my professor used to say in the university of madras and there was a, a there should be a column which says this person has qualified for the degree and there's another clause to it he is not he is matured to take up the role of a, of a post graduate uh, post graduate uh, having an examination or something like that so the mature to take up this clause was abolished this is one thing and secondly that mds is given not taken or something like that is true i have told you the reason why i joined mds course because this was the attitude because they they said we have taken more than the required number of time how could i allow you to pass in the first attempt that is that was the attitude they had but as i told you there were also gentlemen like my professor the few others also at that time in the government of chennai and they had lot of admiration for us even today now that concept has changed thoroughly and especially oral pathology all oral pathologists are very nice they don't have that attitude at all yes definitely not anymore definitely not In- including me <laughs> <laughs> including me oh, that was a so very because, long time back yes this is very long time back but i think some of the another disciplines they still have this concept but i'm very sorry that is of course uh, that is a very bad thing now it's all died almost died down nowadays we give a lot of marks that is also true because what happens in a private competition say i'm we our student thank the university first so they want to have that university first label university rank label so they give marks and they give marks more than what they deserve if they deserve they fine that's not not an not an issue but just doling out marks because the management insist that they should have a university rank we have got so many ranks in university of the so many branches we top and so on this is a very very uh, unhealthy competition which i totally uh, very distasteful I, i totally disagree but this is what is happening nowadays so things have changed from the from the portion of mds not passing the first attempt to just doling out marks it's a very big change and this change is not good because i i personally feel that person deserves a mark he should be given when okay. someone asked me how many marks you give for ug examination that person said my minus my my uh, my minimum is 20 or 30 and my maximum is about uh, 70 he asked me what is my my uh, minimum and maximum i said 0 and 100 <laughs> okay good one that is how it should be yes that is how it should yeah. be yes yeah so you have any suggestion how we can overcome this problem no no that is any mainly thoughts? because of pure pressure from the management we should not yield to pressure but that is a change that people should all take a decision we give students a marks necessary not more than what he deserves even a, a 60 or 70 percent marks could be a university first not they had to have 90 percent yes that is a change that should come in all of them because even one person feels differently then you can't do the change okay. and we should insist on the management saying that it doesn't matter you get university first or university second what matters is how what is the quality of education the quality of education not only in your mds or pathology quality of education dentistry as such yes. they say we our students are uh, have got high enough marks because in engineering and all that there's what is called placement the more marks over placement schools is percentage of passes and ranks in schools in plus 2 and all that and further in engineering is placement so many been placed they're getting so many 10 lakhs per annum per salary they advertise that way so in uh, dental um, uh, for that matter they can't put anything like placement so they have to put something like you know uh, a number of ranks and so on But this is the this is what the management wants because they want to get admissions the better the performance the more the better the admission so that was all done with that intention 
Mm-hmm. But I tell the management what is more important is the feedback you get from the students. Who is not pass out should tell others and should make their their brothers, sisters, or sons and daughters to come back to the same institution because the care you give them when they are students. There's something like you take the fees and give them education is like more like a very corporate way of handling things. But when they are students, they're having some problems. You look at them to the problems, like the hostel problem should be there. Some personal problem should be there. So you learn a helping hand or listen to them and try to solve the problems. That care, they will never forget. So that's important from shift of academy performance or ranks and et cetera, to move towards the care and love we give them when they're away from home is very important. That is very true. Maybe we can also work on a system where, you know, instead of just saying what was our rank today, maybe follow up and see what your students of five years or 10 years back are doing, where they have reached, how successful they are. And that might be a better judgment or, or a better way of assessing what their education was like. It takes you know, more work, quality of course. Educa- <laughs> you know, quality in education should not be compromised. That's it. Yes, that is true. So coming ahead now to oral pathology. Yeah. We have, <laughs> we have, I, you have been an oral pathologist from the time when there were very few, I think. And uh, gone ahead to a time where we, uh, you know, there were very few, but there was placement for everybody that was an oral pathologist, I believe. Then we came ahead to a time where there were, too few for the number of posts. And there was this sudden hike in how much uh, we were required and the number of seats. And we sort of multiplied in a very uh, uncalled for numbers. And now we have come to a point where we are not really required to the numbers that we are. So a lot of discrepancy in the numbers and the jobs available. Uh, What do you think we did wrong in that? I'm sure everyone must have seen that that kind of multiplication of seats was not going to be in the long run sustainable. And I know, of course, that this was decisions made considering that in India, most institutions are run by private managements and this was obviously their decision. So the staff don't really have a say in that. But was there anything we could have done? Any lesson now, now looking back, anything so that at least we can do it now? Anything that we could have prevented this situation? It's a law of demand and supply operating, basically. So when we graduated in 1984, in fact, in, in government entity called Chennai, Chennai was the first place in, for oral pathology in the whole of South India. Manipal started later, Davangri started much later, all the colleges much later, all the colleges. But this government entity called Chennai was the first one to start oral pathology, whole of South India. Andhra was a very great starter. I think Kerala started after, after Tamil Nadu. So, and all the professors were trained in Mumbai, from Nair or from GDC. And that was a center for the post education in India, though Calcutta was the first to start dentistry and dental course in, in India. So, there were a lot of opportunities for me naturally. And I was from the private sector, I think it was the second batch of students. And uh, that demand continued till uh, 19, nine, from 95 to onwards to Laporte, to nearly. 2000, I think, all the girls started coming up in Andhra Pradesh, especially. And I was in the midst of my postgraduate training. They have a lot of offers coming because all the colleges started in Andhra Pradesh. They had a requirement to be met. That is one professor out of six professors to start dental college. One professor should be a body pathology and they will get demands. Luckily, I didn't fall to any of these demands because I was committed to staying in my SDM Darwat. And uh, in spite of all the attractive offers, I I stayed back because uh, we felt that this place was good for us a very long time. So this demand continued and oral pathologists of those days were a lot of offers were exploited. In fact, some of the oral pathologists, when I asked for some staff recruitment, they asked me, which is the nearest airfield? want to come on a visiting basis. So that was the uh, situation. They would choose a place 
which is closer to the airfield because they need to commute long distance from south to north and so on rather than that it takes a lot of time to come by train and so many days were wasted in the in the in the, in the career so this was situation they all went great heights people really enjoyed that then what happened management thought this guy is dictating too many too much of uh, too many terms let us start this oral pathology course somehow from one unit to that's three to students to two units and six students and so on and got it started people were visiting from us were there and there was mass production and oral pathology was being so nice they would allow them not to fail because we want the person to come up and all this there's excess amount of oral pathologist then people are jobless because most or but took up to academics academics are mainly made of sustenance like dentistry the the male female candidate ratio also changed in 1975 when we joined we had hardly of 35 students there were hardly about 9 Nine girls students. We call them nine gems. So from that situation onwards, when later in 2000s, uh, 2010 or something like that, with hundred students, I hardly had about less than ten uh, male candidates. I said not even enough for a cricket team to play. So this was the situation. So what same thing happened oral pathology also. people thought okay oral pathology you can relax in the house have academic job 9 to 4 whatever it is then come back home you can have a practice or just stay back home and look after the house and so on so this sort of so situation was there and then they didn't get job they didn't bother they they said they'll, they'll get married settle down etc and do whatever practice they can do it but a lot and lot more youngsters joined and then they had to find jobs and there was this hue and cry so during my tenure as a president of the association in two conferences one was a midterm conference at sabita dental college chennai to celebrate for the organized for the silver jubilee year the second was a pg convention at tirupati on both these occasions we had invited dr masumuda the president of dental council of india at that time as a chief guest and while he was on stage i made an appeal to him saying that there's a lot of oral pathology without any jobs and so therefore this lecturer's post that is is given to bds students normally a uh, bds candidates normally so this post should be given to uh, mds oral pathologist and you please the reserve at least 50% of the post of lecturers for post graduate qualified holders so i made a general appeal not only for oral but also for other disciplines as well there was given serious thought they had series of discussions meetings and so on now if you look at dental council of india it says that in all post graduate departments there should be only post graduate staff that is up to the level of lecture also there should be post graduate staff only this is a, a change which i have done it has taken some time to uh, get it done but still is not enough still we find people are jobless because if you given option to management you can have lecturers as from bds category it's cheaper for them to employ but probably for a sum of about 10 to 12000 or 15000 per month They employ a BDS lecturer rather than employing um, a, a pure pole PG lecturer with a qualification of twenty five about thirty thousand twenty five thousand per month. So they normally go see the economics and then fish for lower grade. And second thing is their thing is that they always see oh they counting as only professor on professors one head doesn't matter you got experience or no experience because it pays less to have a less experienced professor than a more experienced professor so all these sort of thing attitude of the management bad management is very uh, is very you know disturbing as the administrator or the principal you have to tell them the our experienced professor is always welcome because he is a god can put in lot of experience experience of great value to 
quality education and that i have been trying to do it in in the institute where i worked and they listen to me that's a good thing but many of them the principals don't say that and my mother don't listen also that is true that is definitely true the thing is so you know that um, if we think about it uh, now a lot of things need to really change like for some time back we found out that our association has submitted a, a, a sort of a new uh, uh, syllabus uh, for the training for post graduate training and i think it's been sitting with the dci for the last 3 or 4 years there is not even a response from them so the, uh, the thing is now you have also been a dean so which means you have interacted with the dci <laughs> so what what well, is the deal there why such uh, i mean they are doctors they are dentists they are co- colleagues actually so they should recognize the need if you sit on something for 3 years by the time it is passed it is again outdated yeah very true so. very true very sad situation because if you look at people who are there in the executive committee or holding the president's post or vice president post most of them are not academicians basically we do have academicians but again really very honestly the entire system is corrupt okay mm-hmm. so that's the reason they can say what they can do with that post how can they make money that's the main agenda not dental education or something like that new college okay how many deficiencies are there okay that much money they can make but lot of development had taken place in the dental uh, education regard to the how, how it should be five acres of land so much building so much equipment and so much staff pattern but all done by my my mentor dr c baskar rao and he was the vice president of dental council of india yes he told many colleges in bangalore had started a shopping complex he said that is not how it should be Uh, uh, they should have minimum five acres of land, should have sub quarters and so on. All these were codified and given to the dental council, and has been accepted. Been there for some time. Uh, in, in this situation, I was we were also contributing to this uh, curriculum and other things, equipments and so on. So our names don't come there because we just have to give the you know requirements from the different departments, and our boss could really consider everything. so my contribution has also been there for the syllabus though my name won't come anywhere there regarding the uh, syllabus of post education my the syllabus have written, i have written it if i be this syllabus i have written it subsequently modified and so on but what i have written it somewhere in 2000 uh, when started thank you lesson to but 2000 or so things have changed a lot i've written there like that should have some sort of a computer or something or something like that everything that very basic those days but subsequently everything become a common place they didn't try to upgrade they didn't try to upgrade it they trying to modify it very very sad so what was something uh, special those days subsequently was very common place nowadays so we have framed this, the curriculum and syllabus which i have written over there if you go through there there's a lot of molecular aspects to be trained i said some are, some equipments like a cryostat is desirable i know because very expensive so this desirable and this is necessary and so on subsequently this added a few more points to it and everything is un- almost unchanged they shall remove things which are big now obsolete like the computer and so on Every any every person should have a laptop, and they do have a laptop nowadays. They do. So this is all our names are my contribution all have been there. But any changes in the curriculum, they should be uh, proposed by an academician and like among the dental council members, and there should be someone sitting on the top to see that it's being implemented. It is this not being done because their agenda is different. I told you. Okay. This is, is the, this is this is the truth. This is truth. This is all this bad is truth. truth. Yes, but unless we begin to face that truth, and uh, we will, uh, I mean, at least if we begin to accept there is a problem, then we can try and hopefully start moving to changing it. Uh, I don't know. Can you think of anything which you know at an individual level each one of us can do to begin to make a difference and get the DCI to move? Maybe all of us write a letter to the DCI. 
nothing nothing <laughs> let's go oh. to the waste paper basket <laughs> <laughs> see there are so many court cases uh, with with the president saying that he is corrupt and so on and what happens there have been people who publicized that the one of the mca presidents there were there uh, so many tons of gold yeah, kilos of gold uh, gold coins and others there all published and that person is back in the in the, in the same mca or somebody say them so all this all you know, our letters all go to just go to waste paper basket the name sake they'll call an inquiry or something they said not that is not true so i think the whole system is corrupt if i want someone wants to start a college then who is going to start a college what is the motive behind it is that they have a corporate motive only how to make money there's a question of those days when the people are very uh, genuine have genuine reasons to have educate the public and so on that is not there so a trust starts a college and that's wants to make a profit as much as it can but you can't help it you can't say by education here says that you cannot it's not a business in india it is not a business in india but it should should to change you tell them okay you start a college you make profit at the same time do not uh, that not the quality suffer ensure good quality that is not there you don't have the minds we say you don't have staff you must have full time staff some they don't be any any staff available and you go and get him at higher price who we'll make it as a rule yes we recognize uh, staff part time many universities in abroad request part time staff yes you say part time staff no we will not consider in, so that's all this all nonsense they should the see change should be there and that you write letters nothing is going to happen there should be a change see it's not person one person doing the entire system has to be changed that the system is correct right from state government university and dental council medical council everyone is correct so nothing is going to change unless you are someone like you know an interested president who says no i care for dental education we should revise the syllabus implement it as quickly as possible nothing happens but those who are deem uses can do a lot of things because the university they can change the syllabus they want but most universities some only some uh, do the have the of the cuts to do it others just simply copy the dental consult syllabus so dmc can do a lot of things they can start new courses also and they can modify the syllabus i have got lot i have talked with so many people to tell them or mds practical examination has to be changed but uh, no one listens If you allow me to talk, I can say something more about the practical examination as well. Oh, please, sir, please! This is the whole purpose of you being here. <laughs> It's for us to hear you. Yeah, if you have seen the MTS proper practical examination has not changed ever since I passed also. The same pattern oh, okay. you are following. Same pattern you are following. Basically, everything is same. You know what? You know what? What? What you? What you have done as well. Okay. Now here, gram stain. The gram stain is something is very very basic. that ug also does you also do you are the same persons to the ug as well as the pg what difference does it make no difference you draw blood you go for hemoglobin estimation or differential count same thing the ug also does same question is asked to them the thing you know who draws blood and does it by that method which you are doing the things have changed now everything is computerized and all that why can't you give them a lab report and say interpret it Yes. Right. That should better, no? Then, what do you want to use um, this, this smear from from so tuberculous bacillus smear? Some other thing is there. Why can't you use a plaque sample? This is more relevant to us. Use a plaque sample. You a dark ground microscope. See for motility. Why can't you do that? It is accessible, isn't it? The change of heart. No, it is not. DC doesn't want this. Fine, but you must can't do that, you know. Take a plaque sample and see how, how we are going to see more motility at the west in spider kids and so on. Okay, these are things which it have to be changed, right? And the clinical case always you look for certain things. No? There are no clinical cases available. Then you can project some uh, some uh, uh, cases, PDF etc. And then ask him if you have a case like this, what will you do? What's the diagnosis? but you insist on physical examination being done because when there are no case so 
Sorry, sir. I seem to have lost your voice. So, can you hear me? Oh, so you're on mute. Uh, so you have to unmute yourself. Can I hear? Uh, why can't I hear you? One second. So can you speak? Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. So the whole point i think is that uh, you know what we find uh, constantly is that we are trying to fight against the system like for example trying to get the dci to do things which of course they have so many other levels of problems in there but this is a very good uh, idea you gave us maybe we can now try and focus our attention on the universities that, that might be a little easier. And I think the reach of the staff from the departments, the, the academic staff will be a little more in the universities than in the DCI. So this is definitely something that, uh, you know, we can uh, certainly look at. That That is one thing we can do. Now coming to, of course, our association. Now I, I know, and it in fact, the year when you were, I knew you were president elect, that was, and you were so corresponding with the year you would be the president was the time I chose to join. And I became a part of the executive committee. And we always knew you would do great things. Sadly, the, I, that was also the year I found my mom had Alzheimer's and then finally I couldn't really interact much. But what do you feel? Do you think, what about our association? Can we as an association take a, bigger role internally to control things. I mean, finally, it's like you said, if we as an association decide that, uh, because everywhere we are the ones teaching, we are the ones taking exams. So if we as an association decide that this is what we are going to do and we all follow it, what do you think? Do you think that will work? Uh, so you have to put back your um, mic. So I still can't hear you. Why can't I hear? Um, can the audience hear? So I can't hear. So try turning back your mic on again. Okay, can you just try and speak? No, I can't hear you. Okay, no, they also cannot hear you. One second, I will just try and see. So try again. Uh, so your mic is basically not connected. So your mic is still not connected uh, on that. Uh, there is a camera and mic. Okay. Here's Sanas come. Yeah. Okay. While sir gets that sorted out, let me share some of the earlier comments that had come. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were a lot of hellos for sir.
Okay, here are some of the comments that everybody had for sure. And uh, okay, so we'll join us in a second, no doubt. This was from Dr. Srinivas and Dr. Pushpanjali. Hi. Dr. Krish Settler, Kumar sir to me stands for upholding values, ethics, straightforwardness, and discipline. I'm sure all would agree. I definitely would. Mm. Yes, Srinivas, so is a true teacher. Uh, by the way, in a, in a little while, as we finish the last one or two questions, I would like you all to put in whatever you want to say to Sir and interact with him once we have him back in. Let me see, has he sent me a message? No. Okay. All right. So... Dr. Ashok also is with us today. Good morning. Dr. Sean Mugutan. His classes will be more interesting in journal discussion. He needs a student most must understand the concept behind it instead of just write, reading the article. That is the proper way to go. And yes, absolutely. Totally agree with these comments, Dr. K Karen Bose. We are privileged to have had the experience of learning from Dr. Kumar. Glad to know that he is just as candid as before with no guy. Yeah, that's true. Very true. And uh, Dr. Mahalingam. Good morning, sir, and everyone. Best teacher and best person. Always admires, admire his thirst for learning more and always. Proud to be his student. Yes, sir, is back. Uh, hello. Can you hear yes. me? Now? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Shandran. So we took the few minutes to speak. Yes, all okay, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, yes, we can hear yeah. you, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, we can hear you, we can see you. Yes, you're back. That's fine. Uh, sorry, sorry for yes. the... Uh, I think, uh, so I'm very extremely sorry what happened. I don't know what really what happened, but something <laughs> happened. Don't worry about it. So these things happen. That is technology. That's the whole point. Uh, not to worry at all. We were rather busy. We were going through some of the comments that everybody shared for you. Uh, I think you can also see them at the side on the comments. Yeah, so sure, we sure, reached sure. here. Sure. Yes. And this was from Dr. Nandini. Pleasure to hear, sir. What a splendid journey. You have been an inspiration to many and a wonderful human being. Profound regards. So we just took a few minutes. Uh, that was most of your ex-students and colleagues again saying yeah, yeah. how much they enjoyed being with you. So I was sharing those comments. So coming back to where we were. Actually, where okay. were we? I don't know where you dropped something about saying what association can do about it. Oh, yes. Correct. Well, so I've done so, a lot, quite a bit. I won't say they haven't done anything. For example, they changed the name okay. from oral pathology to oral maxillofacial pathology. They did it. And second, they I told you, as I told you, given the impetus to recruit uh, more lecturers at, at, at MDS qualification, which they got it finally. All lecturers have to be MDS in PG departments. Uh, syllabus, they have suggested a lot of things. But it's not just association because something more than that, there should be something on the DCI uh, who could help us through. We do have some uh, oral pathologists, DCI members, and they should be, if they are there, they should speak in much louder voice so that others could hear. Definitely. Yes, that is also true. So now I'm going to leave it open to everybody to ask sir, what they want to ask. A few oh. comments from you all, a few questions if you have about his experiences, maybe what you felt as his students. And uh, in the meanwhile, till I know there's a time lag. So till you all get us the questions, I will share some more comments. So we have Dr. Zama Muswi. So true, remarkable vision. Dr. Manish Bhargava, sir. Oh, he's telling you, sorry, that was before. Sorry, sorry, I did not have to share that. Okay. Dr. Srinivas, 
change in practical examination is really the most required to be done as suggested by sir very true and dr vinod is saying hello very good morning Shalin. oh dr shalin chandra hello welcome i think this is one of the first times she is here and that yes. is your wonder so <laughs> i think you announce uh, sort of a lucky draw at the end of the session <laughs> <laughs> what will we give them sir i have no problem you want to give a copy of arbans to someone <laughs> i don't mind <laughs> but it shouldn't just be a copy of arbans you should be putting a note in it and giving it your personal note i do i do i have given the, to some of them already they know about it i know yes okay definitely so dr nandini okay that yeah that was that time these are all the earlier remarks here is one more of your ex students i believe dr dinkar desai yeah and Dr. Gauri, good morning, sir, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Divya. Good morning. Wow, Dr. Varpande oh. is with us too. Oh, namaskar, <laughs> namaskar ji, namaskar. <laughs> yes, hello, sir. And I have something to say at this point of time. Yes, definitely. See, uh, I'm quite blessed to work. for work with many people starting from dr dolekya i work on under dr dolekya in manipal and i work uh, shared as an examiner with uh, dr lele uh, dr vivji uh, and interacted with uh, others like uh, you know punja and mrs brave dr bar pande uh, dr asare Uh, the kukreja and so on so all these people are jains somewhere or other i also worked with sir prabhu for a very short time and uh, i'm quite blessed to work with such people for sir lele as well so i'm very blessed to work with or interact with these people and i had a very good opportunity to learn a lot of from them my sort of bad point is my time such mentioned this about it so that's really a, a good uh, experience to yes to sit with and interact with and share a table as an example with all these people that is really i'm really blessed to say that that is very true sir sorry please go on and that's all that's all that's all i just want to so so bad for myself to say that <laughs> yes he actually attends uh, quite a few of the sessions so it is nice to see that he is still keeping on Yeah. So sir I got to ask you one more thing. So I know this is very fresh and you retired just probably I think last month. Um, um yeah. So you yeah. must be still taking rest and I understand catching up with all the accumulated other things that you may not have finished during so many years. But what next? Are you going to stay in oral pathology or are you going to sort of uh, you know wrap up your microscope to say I don't have a microscope right now. <laughs> but i'm still associated with the uh, uh, organs so that will go on and uh, a little bit spiritual so the redemption of the sins are committed <laughs> no so i i don't think any sins would be there you don't know when discharging but, duties discharging duties we are we are part of the system to commit some errors Yes, that is true. That is true. Also, sometimes you know you have to take. Uh, I think one of the comments which I I don't know whether I in, included it in that list was that uh, someone had said in the sentiments they shared that you are very courageous, and of course integrity was there. And I think sometimes in uh, when when you are in uh, you know following something through in a bigger picture, like maybe trying to keep up a standard, or you thinking in terms of maintaining you know the bigger picture of after all somebody who passes today is going to be working on patients or you know doing certain duties tomorrow which you have to see that they do it well otherwise then you are being unfair to everybody they are going to treat 
So in those cases, you know, sometimes we have to make some very hard decisions as teachers and academicians, maybe hold back someone, maybe fail someone. At a personal level, you feel that. But in a bigger picture, you realize it is for the greater good. So yes, I understand that there are those things where I guess every teacher is going to have a few regrets, but things that could not be helped and, uh, you know, part of the duty, it is all a part of doing what you have to do. Uh, with regard to examination and passing and failing, uh, no, 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 don't normally fail anyone unless unless this sum is uh, ridiculously bad. Yes. Because even somewhere near that range, I said, okay, fine, let him learn later. But I always uh, say made very uh, harsh comments. <laughs> they make they, they commit errors. Uh, that was something I, I couldn't help it. And secondly, courage is in the sense that when when someone's presenting a paper or something like that, I used to get up and speak my mind out. Yes, I I, I didn't. Uh, really care much for the age of the person and all that. But at the same time, I wasn't very harsh, but I spoke my mind out. But in the <clears> examination, <throat> someone answers nonsense, I can't stick with it. I said, it's nonsense. <laughs> nonsense is nonsense. But at the same time, I don't fail anyone. Go and I'll, <laughs> that person think that, that he's gone, but realize that he's passed also. Very, very few failures uh, are there. And uh, those failures are there extremely bad. Extremely bad. Those yes, that is there. That is that some is uh, minimum standard is some minimum standard is required. Otherwise, uh, we are yes, not doing definitely. justice. Not doing justice. Yes, it has to be. There has to be that absolute minimum. And, um, you know, there's this thing we have very often where, uh, like, you know, asking questions. I don't know where we have got this time, uh, this uh, thing in us that if someone is asking you a question, they are trying to question you and not the topic, you know. So there is this feeling. And uh, I, I don't think it was there in the absolute seniors. Like, I mean, Dr. Dulakia was always up for a discussion. I have worked with Dr. Lele Sir used to actually encourage us to literally have an argument with him. He used to say, you have to learn to prove your point, <laughs> you know. So, you have to so stand right. up for your point. If you can say it, you can say it. So what? I, and like, you know, he used to always say, I remember because he was my teacher and uh, he used to, you know, actually we used to have this thing. He used to give me a topic. We used to prepare it. And then he used to say, what did you think about it? Sometimes, you know, he would leave to Bombay and <laughs> it would be like the next time he would come back, we would both be ready with further points <laughs> to continue. What was the discussion, and we would continue. Yeah, that's that's a hallmark of a great uh, person. Like uh, my professor also, Vishnu, used to offer me and said, "What do you think of this slide?" When I was doing post graduation, and then he'll say, "Yes, yes, I think I take your point." And this is something he said, "Justify what you say." Like yes. you're not, that's that's how you try to encourage people to learn, think. Maybe they may have a different viewpoint. No, they must have to tell you something which you may not be thinking of that. You can't say exactly. oh, you have to keep quiet. I know. I also call the same thing. I don't discourage anyone. Whatever you say, okay, justify it. That, that's that's how you allow things to learn because all can't be having a total idea of something. He must have read something somewhere, and definitely yes. should encourage. In fact, most of the almost all the oral pathos are nice people. That way, they don't uh, dampen the spirits of the youngsters or the that's youngsters. true. So let's share some more comments, sir. That was, uh, and then Dr. Deepika is listening to you almost after 30 years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. And Dr. Mahesh, the influence, Dr. Pushpalata, that is, the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. Thank you for being a part of our journey, sir. Yes. What's the future? Oh, What's this the future? is one of our younger colleagues. What is the future of oral pathology, sir? Uh, I was I had one of those questions actually myself to answer too. Uh, well, uh, basically when we all took up jobs, academic was the great drop. Then some had to practice as well. And I think uh, a few persons the, the group I met earlier, De Costa, someone from Bombay, De Cruz or someone. He has yes. a, a, a private practice of lab of his own. Yeah, you have to have all the three things and oral pathology future is 
there like any other profession is to stay what i think is our the dentist the fellow dentist should learn to appreciate and refer cases to you so what happens is this is a very uh, very sad thing they don't look beyond the teeth and the gingiva because the patient walks in he says he comes with a diagnosis he comes line of treatment and even sometimes this much what i can pay for you so you just do what he wants the robotic dentist as i call it now well is the time for you to look beyond adjacent teeth and opposing teeth and the gingiva to the oral mucosa may having asymptomatic lesions may have leukoplakia may having mild submucous fibrosis or something like that now it is not the duty of a dental surgeon to look at the entire mouth how long how long does it take a couple of minutes a cursory examination a couple of minutes oral can oral cavity is so accessible to all anything with break cancer state or something like that you can always be the first person to uh, look at it initiate proper treatment advice and so on so that anything intervene at the early stage is easy to treat rather than a full blown cancer this is a social commitment from all of us and all dental surgeon should look at the oral cavity even though there are no complaints and suggest uh, suggest uh, advise the patient not to take any of those uh, habits discuss the habits or refer the case to someone who knows more about it like an oral pathologist or so on so that for a biopsy or something like that if they can't do it themselves this is a social commitment from all of us it may not I mean it may not get you a much in terms of earning but this is a commitment which the person will remove a life tom yeah the doctors are meant for a for a feeling the doctor saw me and my cheek and said you got uh, something like the I'm developing into a cancer and the he can give me the correct advice at the right time and I got in biopsy and he asked me to do this that now I'm fine it saved me a lot of morbidity and a lot of money i'm very thankful to my dentist this is this is what every dentist should do so when these dentists start looking at the oral cavity now we will have cases for biopsy and all biopsy should be done by oral pathologist himself why they should send it to a general pathologist we have got no time to look we have got so much of work and all oral pathologists should have in practice a small lab to do the basic states and then there should be lot of biopsies coming in so you can practice oral pathology in your clinic so this is what is that it's not going to die don't think it's academics is not the only thing there are many things other than that and second thing is research and uh, teaching they can't go together if you involved in teaching then research you don't find time so research is something very very uh, different and very dedicated line of approach unfortunately phd's from these days are not of any good quality what i expect uh, but research is something very different and teachers and research, teaching research can't go together it's very very difficult to manage both so future is good nothing to really worry only thing is you need to diversify academics to practice and practice to lab all have all the three at one if possible that is true so we have another one of your students i guess your favorite words apparently were is talking about carcinoma is breaching continuity and impingement of salivary gland um, this is somebody who remembers something very specific from what you have been teaching sir <laughs> yeah. and dr sudendra all the memorable moments in stm in darwad okay thank you and dr krishna raj he is uh, i don't know if you know he is a periodontist now mm-hmm. really nice to see you sir for memories okay and uh, okay i static can't bone remember. is that static bone cavity probably yes okay yes must be <laughs> okay and then we have dr mohit sharma saying hello dr oh yes another favorite so <laughs> coming class what do you think Uh, well there's a small story how carving came attached to oral pet you can just give me two minutes i can tell you what the story is like 
So actually, yes. uh, when we were students, when we were taught by periodontist, Dr. Prasad was very good in carving. Otherwise, there's nothing to do with carving as such. He taught dental anatomy and carving. So what happened, it seems, when this subject will come up, then uh, the operate dentistry or the conserved dentist said, we will teach carving and uh, we like to be examiners. But we won't teach oral histology. You teach oral histology. The same thing with the prosthodontist. We can teach carving, but we will not teach oral histology. They don't, don't say so your, so your domain. So then the question said, those who teach all the subjects will be the examiners. So that's why the oral pathologist said, okay, we'll teach oral histology, we'll teach dental anatomy, we'll teach carving because we want the examination. That's how the carving keep attached to this particular oral pathology. So I think in today's uh, context, maybe it's time we combined it now and gave away carving, maybe kept histology at, at the most. <laughs> because, no, but uh, I mean, uh, implant dentistry is going like that. There are multiple departments involved. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Ca carving, carving, uh, they, someone could take it up separately uh, as per part of the uh, you know, phantom exercises in operate dentistry and so on. But they should be delinked, I feel. But there's nothing wrong. They should identify teeth. Whatever you teach them, again, they go to periodontics and then they will start identifying their deciduous teeth. They're carving deciduous teeth in pedo. Am I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm having some other little issue here. Sorry. Okay, never mind. So, so in periodontics, uh, they teach carving then deciduous teeth. So you cannot uh, say carving is not necessary. Someone else can do it. But it's very important to identify teeth, identify the dentition, uh, the sequence of eruption, and so on. This is a must, it's a basic subject. It can be part That's of true. it, but carving can be that with someone, but that would de link carving. You can. Seriously, I, I, I would say so too, because in a, in a value system, it is not adding anything to oral pathology. I mean, oh, finally, a certain hours are given by our staff, by our, by oral pathologists to teach something that is not in any way adding. I would much rather we, you know, spend that time learning and teaching something that can improve oral pathology outcomes, you know. So histology, I can still understand because, OK, it's the basic and uh, frankly, no other dentist can do it. <laughs> so, yeah, But calling someone, someone, someone to teach carving. At least yes. the, uh, the crown part of it, I mean, teach it. It's yes. part of the dental anatomy, so someone should teach it. Yes. And in fact, in that, I think we uh, we do so much carving, but we don't do so much in, uh, because actually physiology, oral physiology also is there. And when was the last time anybody taught a dental student to collect saliva, to examine saliva? Uh, we examine blood and we examine urine as a part of general pathology and physiology, but we don't test saliva. In I mean, th th those are things which I think now we can take those up a little bit. Very, very, very true. These are things we should do in the curriculum update. Saliva has to yes. be taken as a, as a tissue for examination. Okay. Because you get corpus skulls and those sort of things. They should study that. We should examine saliva and identify the from salivary smear, the bacteria rather than from the blood. Totally. I mean, we, we begin, we have to start. Uh, I think our science was a, uh, was a, like a baby at one point in its germination stage and the germinal stages, we picked up everything from medicine. But I think it's time we begin to establish ourselves a little more. I think it's way over time, actually. It's so many years, half a century ahead and we are still there. So, okay, let's go on to the next. Dr. Nasser says, thank you very much for your remarkable vision and sharing your vision. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Ravi Prakash, always feel proud to say that I am Dr. G.S. Kumar's student. <laughs> Dr. Venki, I had made presentation regarding the suggestion to DCI in TVDM conference. True and conference. Okay. Was there, but so, of no yes. use. See, this is what happens. <laughs> they're not that you know, they're not doing work, but there's no one to listen to and no one to take it up to the matter to DC and make them do it. This is where they are do it. Yes, and uh, for those who may not know, Dr. Srinivas also is a dean 
of another well-known institute in the country. So, yes, when our principals and deans find it that they can't do much, it is very, very disheartening. And Dr. Settler, sir, was so frank, non-political, and not so diplomatic, yet he managed to pull off such a remarkably successful and good stint as principal in KSR. Shows how versatile he is. Kudos to sir. Oh, thank you. It's a very frank uh, appreciation. <laughs> yes. And I think it also very clearly says, sir, that uh, by being all of those things, you can still survive and you can still get on. So it is... Uh, these are qualities that are possible to have, even today. Yes. Um, so you were going to say something. Nothing. So no. just you have to, with whatever role you perform, then you see, these are my things I expect. I don't want to compromise on these things. You have to make very clear to the management. Then you probably management. they would listen to you. Yes. You don't have to bend back twice to make, make them happy. True. And I think also you will have to sort of begin to pick your fights, pick your battles and decide that, okay, these ones I'm definitely not moving on and these ones may be okay. No, <laughs> when, you present the, when you present the matters very important to them, at the same time you need to appreciate they are there to make some money. So you should yes. propose certain things which gives them money as well. At the same time, gives a good name to the institution. At the same time, yes. your agenda is also achieved in the party. So you have to present such a way. Sugar coat many true. things. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. And Dr. Ramadas, so your contribution in oral pathology was tremendous. You are a legend. We greatly miss your association. Uh, my colleagues in the uh, okay. He's a dentist and a physiologist. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Hmm, very interesting. And Dr. Prasad, wonderful listening to sir. It was an honor working with you. I consider myself your student rather than a colleague since I have been learning a lot from you for the past uh, over 10 years, 10 plus years. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and Dr. Vanki, not of much help from DCI. So really appreciated the changes suggested in the presentation. Monica did a lot for the association. In fact, we have codified many things which... Uh, this subsequent comments didn't take it up it a lot regarding to speakers who are coming from abroad what is the uh, requirements mm. and so on now one appreciated okay. all those things he has wanted to state uh, level conferences which was not taken up again the subsequent with the committees Committee. done a lot that's true done a lot sometimes continuation also is required and we start something that's true Apparently, you were his examiner. Okay, that is why I remember you coming to college for as an exam. It was for his exam. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I was yes. probably the only one in Karnataka University. So, I come there many times. Yes. Yes, those were also the days where our uh, KLE and uh, STM were in close competition always. <laughs> yes, yes. Alka yes. was very passionate about the students. <laughs> yes. Well... So we have one more from Dr. Ganesh Saran. Any research happening in any field of dentistry, either at PG level or UG level, should involve oral pathology faculty as a mandatory part of the research team. This will help improve the quality of research coming out from India. That's his two cents. Very, very nice two cents. We all agree with you, I think. Yeah. Yes. And... Yes, Dr. Nasser also said that is very true. I loved what you just mentioned, Dr. Kumar. Yes, that was about your last comment. Okay, here is another one on the same topic. Do you think oral pathology and oral biology should be split as a subject in academics? Can this help fill the unemployment scenario for oral pathologists currently? When you split oral pathology as a department, then you should be oral biologist. <laughs> with this, yes. then you cannot say there is a separate department. Now, as the DCA, they have only one lecturer for dental anatomy, but there's no post graduation in the subject. So, any BDS graduate with sufficient experience can be a lecturer. Instead of that, they can say this dental anatomy is taught by oral pathologists. Therefore, you can have a, a lecturer in dental anatomy for that. Post, you have a MDS oral pathology. That can be done. That should be done easily, probably. 
But we say oral biologists, we split up a department to be there. Then they'll ask for requested qualifications, oral biologists. We don't have this course in our country. In foreign countries, oral biologists are different from oral pathologists. Both are entirely different. So this is not possible at this stage of time. True. Very true. But I think it's something maybe that can also be thought out after we sort out the existing problems with oral pathology. <laughs> so then we have wonderful listening to you, sir. Thank you. I have to provide thank you. But most welcome. It has been my pleasure, actually. <clears throat> Dr. Shilpa Datta is sending her regards. Dr. Settle, ma'am, I think we should take carving more seriously, in fact, because I feel we can contribute to lab work in prosthodontics, which can act both as an additional academic responsibility, maybe. But I'm afraid I don't agree. I don't know if sir will agree. Uh, carving to be part of our own, yeah, can. You see, it all depends on the person. If the person is the person who's good in carving, always say that I want for carving. Person not good in carving, say I don't want carving. But if you look at, uh, there's no connection between oral histology, which is our basis, and uh, yes. uh, uh, carving. But we don't have a oral biology department. We don't have a dental anatomy department as such. If you have a dental anatomy department as such, then anatomy and this can all go together. We don't have such a department. Someone has to teach the subject. Someone has to teach carving. So who does it? As I told you earlier, who want exam ship should take this. So this is a composite subject, no? oral physiology, dental anatomy, dental morphology, and so on. So all this composite subject, someone should teach. And whosoever teaches should be the examiner. That should be the criteria. Yes, so sir. this is what sir, this I, is. You can, yes, there's no sir. solution as such as of now. There's no solution. My only, uh, I mean, I, I know carving is very important for the people who use it. And it has to be taught in dentistry, also very important, obviously. No, no. But even, I even, don't think it adds to oral pathology in any way. No, but even now carving has given a very uh, small percentage of marks in the, 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 the practical. I mean, from 50%, they're only 30% now. They've done it and they don't insist on doing the entire dentition. They've reduced it also. They have downplayed it and it's quite okay. But you can't eliminate it. Someone should teach at some point of time. Yes, definitely. Someone should teach. My question is, should we be teaching? <laughs> Someone should good. teach. And while it is with us, we should teach it the best that we can. Uh, but I, I, my total question is, I think it's about time we uh, someone else taught it. And so we get more and more time and more and more focus on oral pathology on things that can make us better oral pathologists because we even dedicate some time in the postgraduate training to dental anatomy. And how does that make them better oral pathologists? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. For today, where we are needing to so send why, people why? out to be pathologists rather than academicians. No, no. See, well, I, have a, I have an answer to that question. Yes, sir. Because we always think that people are taking oral pathology course will graduate and take up academics. When they take up academics, then they will be given in charge of teaching carving to the students because the one, the lower most in the cadre of uh, teaching gets this job. Uh, so it's true. Yes. The moment they say, I want to be joined as a faculty, can you teach carving? No, I can't. Then there's no need for you. I'll take someone else. So, because of that in mind, we say that they should be person to give a carving demonstration. That's the reason. We always think that the person is going to take up yes. academics. That's the reason. Yes, but now as we are, have to train them to go out and be other things, but academicians, um, maybe, I don't know, I, I'm thinking that this needs to be retaught no. and replanned no, no. again. The present scenario is that they want a job, so they'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. Can't uh, can't question that. Yes, Dr. Vasu, good morning. And Dr. Krisha, knowledge of dental anatomy can be put to good use in aesthetic dentistry. Maybe a good and viable clinical opportunity as well. If you're in practice, yes, of course, you can do yes. that. Definitely. And Dr. Chintu, good to hear from you, sir. Proud to be your student. Thank you for being a source of inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Chintu. 
Are we again not audible? Oh, that was Yamuna. Are we not audible again? I don't know. I have a comment here at. So I think of this nine minutes. Hmm. There is nobody else saying that it's not audible. Okay. And uh, the Niranjan says, is it possible to train OS, OMDR and OP together as it was earlier to improve the skill and knowledge on the one MDS degree? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Not at the, not this point of time. They all been a bit uh, uh, yeah, long back. Yes. Dr. Bargo, always miss uh, as a teacher, guide, mentor and nurturer. Ah, so Dr. Sudhindra, I think he's planning for his future. Is asking you what did you enjoy more, academics or administration? I was wondering why this question had come up before. Well, I enjoyed as being in academics. In fact, in administration, what we do is we spend most of the time trying to find out staff members, trying to settle disputes between staff versus students, students versus staff, and teaching versus non-teaching, and so on and trying to get admissions, get the seats filled up, okay? Then uh, to parents' complaints and they're going to hostel facilities, this is not working and so on. So what you learnt and what you do, they are not totally unrelated to each other. Okay, there is no uh, this thing at all. So if we sometimes vex what I've studied and what I'm doing here, okay? So that means that, but Academics is always very, I love to teach right from the day I started a uh, UG student also. And when I go to class, I was taking class even for the IR batch students when I was a uh, principal, I feel very relieved. I switch off the phone, put in silent mode, but still they keep on calling me now and then. And I, but I feel very relieved in teaching. I feel I'm, I'm very relaxed and relieved. Academic is my first love. But administration, because I was given the charge and oral pathology is a normal choice for, admi for uh, as an administrator for the management because many oral pathology are full-time academicians that can spend beyond the working hours doing admin work, like preparing for inspections and so on. Or examinations is something which has been thrust on uh, staff. No one wants to take it up. It's a very thankless job. But again, oral pathologist who is a full-time ad full academician takes up the job. As I told you, you know, oral pathologists nowadays will do any job they want because they want some position in the, in the faculty. So administration is, I have to do it. I did uh, my best, but my love is for teaching is always there. And I love, I find some time, I said, let me take some class. Long time I'm not taking one for a class. So I like to teach that may be first law. That's what I enjoyed most being an academician rather than administration. So academics first. I thought yes. so. <laughs> okay. Yes, Dr. Shilpa also agrees saliva has a lot of potential. That is true. That is true. Dr. Srinivas, let oral histology and biology be the main subject. Others should be simply merged in it. We say oral right. biology, everything merges and comes into it. We say oral biology, everything comes into it. In yes, plan, I feel you mean dental anatomy comes into it. Yes, I guess. In a way, yes. It will be closest then because it will be the collection of the normal, essentially. Yes, Dr. Sudendra. Okay. Uh, he's telling me that it, it, the sound is fine. Okay. Uh, Dr. Setro, it's a vicious cycle we are in. Students aren't taking up OPAT as a PG subject due to lack of job opportunities. No PG students, therefore no PG units, no need for staff. Diversification is a need of the hour. Yes, that is yeah, true. I totally, I totally agree with him. Totally agree with him. Yes. And here is our last one. Sir, enjoyed academics for sure. So this is someone who has been in your class and knows that you are in your element while teaching. He's also a dean of a college. Oh, okay. Oh, Dr. Vinod, okay. He did not uh, sort of... Click in place. All right. So, yes, I think we have come to the end of the session. So, yeah. one last note from you, sir. Yeah. If you could talk to yourself 36 years back, what would have you told yourself in terms of what to think about the future or what to do differently? 
I'll tell him, thank you for everything what you've done for me. I imbibed all the qualities and I did my best to continue uh, whatever qualities I imbibed from you. I met him recently also and he was not in good shape. Uh, okay. But I, I met him, I thanked him, I told him I become principal, all those things. Happy. And meet him after retirement, I have to go and meet him now. I should do that. True. Yeah, I'm very grateful to that person because uh, you have to have a good guide. Yes. Very important. It leaves you all your tension. Instead of having someone to be, you know, why I chose this course, why I'm doing this course. I don't know they'll write yes. I started liking the course more and more because of him, of his attitude. I know. I I was very lucky. I had Dr. Dolake was my guide. And of course, Dr. Lele, I think, was even more involved. And my respect for Dr. Lele has forever. But even today, when I think of doing some things, I, I actually think to myself, what would Dr. Lele think? You know, if this was, if he was here today and I had to tell him I'm doing this, what would he think? And I think that that's some influence that uh, sort of molds us in time. Dr. Dolika was a down to earth person, very simple. Yes, he very was friendly. Yes. And very. Uh, my two odd years working with him in Manipal was a great opportunity. He is. A, he was a great teacher. Actually, somehow I had more interaction with him during my BDS days than my PG days. I was his last batch, so yeah, we had more interaction somehow with Dr. Lele than we had. But he, Dr. Dolakia, was great. His teaching of odontogenic tumors <laughs> and cysts was uh, something entirely oh, beyond. Oh, and the total other aspect of it, he's very good. He used to calculate the interest including compound interest for the sum for so much period of time mentally <laughs> wow okay i did not know that <laughs> okay it's very good that way yes yes it's uh, arithmetic yes. ability arithmetic ability was very great compound interest used to calculate not simple interest yes. yeah wow yeah. Now, Dr. Dolakia had some very great and as a uh, out of oral pathology even as a person as a teacher he was a, the probably among the greatest examples one could have. When we were in BDS, once one of our batchmates fell asleep. We were just 40 of us in the class. And uh, it, it so happened, you know, when you're just 40, you cannot escape uh, being noticed. So we were all sort of nudging each other slowly, trying to pass the message around to the next person next to him, please wake him up sort of thing. Finally, of course, we were not subtle enough, sir. So we caught sir's attention. So what's happening? So and then he said, yes, I know he's sleeping. Let him sleep. <laughs> so we were surprised. Afterwards, I asked him. So, so I said, see, nobody gets up first thing in the morning and decides, I'm going to class and sleeping today. You know, let me get up and go to class to sleep. So he came here. He made the effort. He wanted to attend. He was too tired. He fell asleep. Now, he can't help that. But at least if he sleeps now, he will attend the rest of his classes better. You know, I, I, I think that that was the sort of uh, way of thinking that really made me always remember that students by very nature, and I always have to believe that students mean to learn and mean the best, you know, so and never think of is, it any other way. You can command respect with using your official capacity. Okay, you'll make a good morning, sir, and so on. Once, yes. the, once your, your academic, your um, the post is gone from you, you people still re respect you. That's the real love. Right, that's what it is. Because you you develop as a person rather than just the respect for your official position of which you hold. That is right. Very true. That's very important. Yes. Like that way, all these people are always uh, they deserve admiration and respect. Very true. They... Yes, and we have been very very lucky to have had direct interaction with some of them. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yes. I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed that way. Yes. I also consider myself very blessed I've had time with some of the greatest teachers, both in oral pathology and even in my BDS days, there has been so much of, and in those days since, uh, you know, uh, like you said, there was a possibility of having visitors. So we really literally had the best of the best coming and teaching us, you know, it was quite an experience. Yes, that's true. And uh, yes. 
Dr. Srinivas, yes, talking about doing both. I'm assuming both teaching and work. And then wonderful listening to you. Yes, salivary diagnosis. Yes, best we'll start it and then we will make it a separate branch, hopefully. Yes. Dr. Madhu. Yes. Hi, Madhu. So lovely to see you. Yes. So, and she also says, thank you, sir. So, okay, sir, we have reached okay. the end. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a very long session. Yes, so it's okay. With 12.30 is like roughly where we reach normally. So, it's okay with the discussion. So, I will just give me a second to share this little. Yes. Oh. So, sir, you know, this is the point where normally I share a certificate of uh, appreciation to for the guests for attending a webinar, for presenting. But with you, it seems a little redundant to give you a certificate. <laughs> so instead, I thought I will just uh, share this poem or uh, something that I have actually modified a little bit from the original poem from Wilfred A. Peterson, which I felt after reading everything that you had received, all the notes that you had received, I felt this would be appropriate. So basically it is, uh, it's just a sentiment I'm sharing and I hope all your students will be okay with me taking the <laughs> chance to do this. So this is basically to say the greatest dream is a chance to walk with the dreamers, the believers, the courageous, the doers, the successful people with their head in the clouds and their feet on the ground. To let their spirit ignite a fire within us, to leave this world better than the way we found it. And we thank you so much for making that dream come true from all your students, colleagues and friends. These are some of the names of the people who had given and sent their messages. I could not include the whole length of all the messages, but I have made it into a PDF and I will share that PDF for you with you so that you can always read those and keep those memories. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, and I thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm very happy as I said, someone there to listen to at this stage of life <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes. But I, you did a wonderful service. So please keep, to, keep doing the service and uh, Thank you very much. And for all the people who are doing some nice, good words okay, about me. Thank I you, sir. They, Thank I you. hope it was, it was beneficial in some way, some of them. I'm sure yeah. it was. Sir. So many okay. said it was. And I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. This is the actual, I must say, the upside of doing what I do is I'm getting a chance to sit across the table and have long conversations with uh, so many wonderful people. And that that is seriously one of the best parts, you know, the, the greatest blessing of what I'm doing, in fact, I think uh, makes me thoroughly enjoy it. I but really sir, I also it. have to say, uh, sorry, I have to say, I, I mean, like you have just retired from oral pathology, uh, you know, the academic or, or the official work, but we do hope you will come back and give us present a lecture sometime soon sure, on sure. the channel. If, if invited, I'll do that. So you you have a permanent open invite. You choose the topic. You tell me when. Oh, the other way about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was a little nervous to start today's, but I come prepared with so many questions and answers. And what you be asking to catch off guard, but I felt so relaxed talking to you. It's like one to one -to interaction was so nice. I really enjoyed. It. Thank you, sir. It was truly enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Very much. So. Yes, I have a few more things to share. So one is, of course, that the I have been sharing this and you can submit your proposals for short videos for the channel. <clears throat> if you want, just go to the website, find out how these are the series you can submit. And because obviously we cannot accommodate everyone here in the long format. So just to give everybody an opening and to let everyone have a chance, if you do want to have a video presented, Please check out the proposal, submit your proposal. And if it is our group of experts, we'll check it. And if it is accepted, then we will help you prepare the video. So that is not a problem. And uh, then the next week, so we are coming Tuesday on the 23rd. We have a live stream from the research and technology series by Dr. Mala Kamboj. We'll be sharing her work. This is all her collection of work, not just one, on oral exfoliated cells. And for the session, Dr. Joss will be the expert. He was with us sometime back preparing his, uh, 
presenting his own lecture. Now, so I do hope you will be with us. Also, for in case you have forgotten, uh, this evening is the last of the invited guest lecture series from the Department of Oral Pathology and Oral Biology at the University of Pretoria. I think I have shared the details in our last in the last uh, newsletter that I had shared with everyone, and uh, that will be at around I think seven thirty our time in India. But all the times uh, time zones are given. The talk is by Dr. Nicole Cipriani, and the topic is salivary gland neoplasms from core biopsy to resection, pitfalls and pearls. So do remember to attend that. And this is for all of you. Thank you for all your participation in the live streams, for your views of the recordings, the likes, the subscribers, the comments. It all helps us to come back each week and to continue on this journey of promoting oral pathology together. Now have a fabulous week and we shall meet again next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I'll leave. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mandana. Wonderful opportunity. You're welcome, sir. It was totally my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again. Yeah, I do join. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.